Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we're going to test the new Malwarebytes against 2000 brand new threats that I have just collected from the wild west of the internet. We're going to use a script to automate the execution of all of these threats on our test system. This should give you an idea of the proactive protection that is offered by Malwarebytes. And that's an important point because in the past, I know a lot of you know Malwarebytes as the second opinion scanner that you use to figure out if your computer has a virus. Well, now Malwarebytes is a fully functioning antivirus. It's got real-time protection, behavioral protection to prevent malware from entering the system and we're going to find out how good it is at that. We're also going to have uh, task manager open so you can look at the processes as they execute. Of course we're also going to go for our usual monitoring of the situation using Malex. Our threats are going to be on the shared uh, network location, network directory. And one small point to note is that Malwarebytes for whatever reason does not scan network directories. It could be to limit the performance impact on the home user environments. So we're simply going to copy the files over to a desktop and then execute them. And that's what the additional parameter here is for. I just wanted to mention that right off the bat. So without further ado, let's the testing begin. As you can see, our threats have begun to execute. We're getting prompts from Malwarebytes saying malware has been blocked. You can see some of the uh, new AI detections pop up. So far, we've got a block rate of 100%, but we'll see how this number stacks up as we execute more and more threats. We've got about 2,000 files to go through, of course, 2011 to be precise. So that's a lot of malware. Also want to mention, we will be testing other products using the exact same method. So you will be able to compare their relative performance in this domain of testing. Now, interestingly, we've got a stop random somewhere detection here and that should also tell you we've got a wide variety of threats here so we've got different types of ransomware we've got info stealers interestingly we've got one file that did successfully execute it says message from rick ashley so i'm guessing this is a rick roll and it has changed our desktop background so for those of you who don't know this is a very old um, internet joke based on rick ashley is never going to give you up so i wouldn't really count this as malware Although um, some may argue that getting Rickrolled is uh, worse than getting infected by malware. <laughs> That's just a joke. But in all seriousness, our system appears to be fine. So that seems to be just a, a, some kind of a joke executable. But other than that, we are hovering at a proactive detection of 99.3%. Now, I did notice some other interesting detections here. I did see uh, Trojan Verloc, which is a ransomware that also infects other files and makes them ransomware. So it's very prevalent on the internet, even though it's um, a threat that's several years old now. It always keeps producing new variants that have been seen recently so that's why it's in our list we've got another thing execute but this looks like some kind of remote access tool not necessarily malware but something that could be used by attackers i'm just gonna change uh, the desktop background back just for the thumbnail but the test appears to be going at steady pace everything looks good so let's speed it up shall we
the test is now complete and we have about 34 samples that were executed. We did have some installers pop up. Some of them looked like PUPs, but overall we have a proactive detection of 98.31%, which is actually very high compared to some of the other tests I've done recently. So that is good to see. Now we do have a little icon on desktop. Seems some things were installed, but now we're going to reboot the system and we'll see if there's any changes that have happened to this computer, any lasting impact. If we have a quick glance at uh, Task Manager, I don't really see anything that sticks out as taking up CPU or doing anything actively. I don't think there are any malware process, but we're going to be thorough. We're going to do a proper forensic analysis of the system, do some second opinion scans, and we'll see. All right, second opinion scan results. First up, Norton Power Razor detected three things, but couple of these appear to be temp files, so we're just going to discard those because they're temporary. Now we do have one exe and app data roaming, which we are going to look at though. This one is an untrusted unknown file, possibly malware. We'll see if it's active on the system or what happens when we execute it. Now Hitman Pro also finished scanning. Nothing really detected here other than scorecard research, which as you all know, is a Microsoft uh, you know, tracking cookie. It's gonna be there in every Edge browser. Now, I do wanna stress that these scans are important because um, we do wanna check if there's any actual damage on the system. So we're going to go ahead and execute this file. It seems to be a 20 kilobyte file. Could be some kind of malware trace, but uh, we're going to double check. So if we execute it, turns out, it gets blocked by Malwarebytes and deleted. So it was probably dropped by one of the many EXEs that were running on the system, but uh, the other part of the malware may have been blocked. So there's no real lasting damage from that one. It's just a trace. So this is pretty much a clean sheet over here. It's important to do these second opinion scans because when we're running these files, we don't really know what they are because they're collected automatically. Of course, I haven't personally checked every one of the 2000 files. So it is possible there'll be PUPs. Also, there's a possibility that something gets blocked after execution. So it's good to actually check the system and see that there's no real damage. Now, before we go ahead and wrap this up, I do want to do a very quick false positive test. We know it's good at detecting malware, but we also want to check if it's good at not blocking safe applications so that you have a good experience using the system. So we have over 2,000 safe EXEs. All of these are verified. There is absolutely no malware in here. And now we're going to scan this folder with malware bytes and we'll see if it falsely flags anything at all. There are some files that are tools that are not frequently used that do things that are similar to what a malware might do like encryption, but they're perfectly legitimate applications that someone might use. So we wanna really push to see how good the detection engine is at classifying stuff. The scan is complete and we detected 46 items, but it says we scanned 4,000, even though we only have about 2,000 folder. So clearly it's um, flagging maybe every individual file inside one of these self-extracting archives. Let's have a look at the detections though. So we've got quite a few heuristic detections. So in case you're not familiar with the word, heuristic essentially means rule-based pattern matching. So we're trying to make a guess or an approximation. So we have quite a few here. So this, for example, is actually a game executable. This Medal of Honor Allied Assault. It is quite old though, but it's also really good. Same with kingdomcom.exe. It seems like quite a few game EXEs are actually flagged. Now I'm curious what would happen if we were to run these. So if I go ahead and let's say try to run the Medal of Honor EXE. Now obviously this is not going to work because we don't have the game installed, but I just wanna see if it's blocked by malware bytes or not. And turns out it is. So you would have to exclude these files if you were running the game on your computer. Overall, if we do the math, it turns out to a false positive ratio of about 1.1%. Now it could be possible to uh, tone down the heuristic engines to reduce false positives, but that may also reduce detection. I'd actually love to hear your thoughts on false positives in the comments below. Would you rather have a few false positives and much higher detection, or would you lose like three, 4% detection, but have much fewer or no false positives? So there you have it. Those are the final results. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you think Malwarebytes fare? Now, one of the things I like about Malwarebytes is the simplicity of the UI, how easy it is to control and turn on and off individual protection components. Like if you wanna turn off web protection for whatever reason, you can do 
do that at the click of button. Also, it has a very light footprint on the system. It's just easier to use compared to something like Windows Defender, which it does replace. So again, for those of you who think historically Malwarebytes would work alongside Windows Defender, that's not the case anymore. Now it would just completely replace Windows Defender or whatever current AV you're having and run its own real-time protection in the background. As you can see, um, we do have MBAM running. That's the uh, Malwarebytes process. Let me try to locate it. So we do have Malwarebytes service here, and I rarely ever see these things take any kind of CPU. So that's something to consider for those of you who care about things like that. We do have a lot more tests coming up. We are also going to be testing this against our own custom simulated attacks, zero day threats with Malix. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC security channel. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and you have some special stuff coming up for the new year. So thank you all so much for watching. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.